Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Bullish or Bearish. My name is Tony Chu. I'm from Success Options Group, and I'm here with my sister Angela. And uh, we're gonna we're bringing you another episode. And I think you know you guys have gotten the hang of what we're doing here, like giving you both sides of the story. I think we'll be the first ones to admit to you that we don't necessarily know everything, right? And we're not experts in every single topic, but we're trying to get you those pieces, those topics that you're really interested in. So what we're really going to do this today is something I think is really interesting because we actually chose a topic that's kind of controversial and is really hot right now because what we're going to talk today about is we're going to be talking about investing in the cannabis industry you know the whole marijuana thing you know like cbd like there are so many different terms for it but we're talking about just the entire thing in general like all the different possible aspects that are associated with cannabis so i'm taking the pro side today and i'm going to be telling you why it's a great time to be thinking about ways to invest in this market because really right now, the cannabis market is a very young expanding market. It's a very, gro it's like a growing industry. And right now, because it's so young, it is at the most profitable time to invest in. Because since it's a growing market and it's a young market, the price of entry is actually very low. So like the stocks, the ETFs, like the other ways of investing in cannabis, like the prices or the amount of money that you need to be able to invest can be actually quite reasonable and very low for people. Okay, so that gets into a good starter, starting point. So, I mean, make sure you guys check out the video on penny stocks that we talked about because many of these kind of cannabis, um, primarily weed stocks can be like penny stocks and they can be very volatile and they can be very, um, let's say, hit or miss right that, that would be the best way um but you know without even going any farther the controversial side of this is weed and specifically and this is not necessarily cbd which has a distinction is not legal in every state in the u.s right so that's just one of those things is you know and what i'm going to bring that up in other points too is that it's just not legal everywhere right so there there adds that extra distinction which means that, that that at some point the federal government isn't approving of these kind of this this kind of market this kind of product. Okay, so you bring up a really good point. The fact is is that thirty seven states have approved of medical marijuana use, and eighteen states have approved of recreational use of marijuana. Now. I know what you're talking about with the federal thing. Yes, it is technically still illegal federally, but they're not enforcing it. And there's a lot of talk about how, like with the growing acceptance of the use of cannabis and marijuana, that that federal limitation is going to be overturned so that it will get legalized in the near future. So what they're talking about right now is while the, you know, while the process of getting it legalized is still like happening, because of that, the price to get into this industry is pretty low. But the thing is, is that you have to admit that the acceptance of medical marijuana use has grown over time. I mean, in the past, like 10, 20 years ago, it was like, no, that's illegal, that's a drug. But now it, 37 states have already approved it for medical use. And that just shows the growing popularity of it. So if, in a sense, if the entire like society and community has become more approving of it and allowing it, then what can the government do but go with what people want, right? Especially it's safer if it's controlled instead of, you know, the illegal stuff. So I, I agree with you. Like all signs kind of point towards this legalization. Um, but that, that gets into my next point of talking about cannabis as an industry or as an investment, as we're specifically talking here. As an investment, I want a return on my investment and I want to make money, right? I want my investment to grow and give me returns. And that's one of the biggest things, the issues I see with the, the cannabis is that, okay, so the first thing is because it is legal in some places, what they do is they tax the heck out of it, right? It, this goes right at the bottom line of the whole industry. They're taxing it higher than cigarettes and higher than 
all the other kind of vices, right? So it's, it cuts into the, you know, how much money the company can make, right? And there's, since it's not legal federally, most of these companies are kind of niche, right? Just like they're penny stocks, right? They don't necessarily cover the whole country. And the biggest thing, problem I see is that, so when a person, when one of these companies' stocks go up, the, the way they raise money is they sell shares to bring in more income into their, their company, right? So they dilute. They dilute you as an investor into that stock. Okay. So you bring up really good points in that aspect. But the thing is, not all, in a sense, stocks or ways of investing in like cannabis are necessarily growers, like you're probably talking about, like actual growing companies. There is actually a lot of different ways to invest in the cannabis industry without specifically picking, you know, somebody who's growing it. Because there are companies that are, like you said, agricultural or, you know, making them. But then there's also companies that are more along the lines of, you know, pharma, which is like, you know, they're actually like legally allowed to make pharmaceuticals or ones that are doing food products that allow it or other kind of, you know, like topical products. And there are also ones that are doing it in beverages, like beer companies. And then you also have your ETFs, the real estate type trusts, which are also, you know, talking about the actual purchase of the land on which they're growing it or the hydroponic units. I mean, there's actually a whole variety of possibilities that can you can look into. And some of these, like, especially if you're talking about like the ones that deal with devices, like the actual vapor tubes or like some of the other things where they're actually associated with the cannabis industry, but also can be cross associated with the nicotine industry. Like those things, you know, they're not directly associated with the cannabis industry, but are still kind of part of it, which also means that they will also see some of the side effect of growth because of this industry. Yeah, so I guess I hear you about all the different alternatives. It just sounds really complicated, right? So like for most real like investors, you know, I would say the common investor, what they know is what they can see. Like when they drive by and they see that, the, the shop there with the, the green leaf, right? And they know that they can go in there and, and buy. And that's where most people think of when they think of consumer sales. So what you're talking about sounds like a lot more research to me. Um, I think the biggest other thing is now, if I'm just talking about consumer sales, right? And the sale of the product, um, a little less with CBD, but with, um, well, maybe not with CBD and with just normal recreational use, is it's a commodity then it so what differentiates one company's product from another right and that that's the biggest problem i see with the industry is that well one's just like the other right it's like they call it a different name but isn't it just it's just the same product right so like you think about all of these big companies that had to create brands in order to like differentiate just toilet paper or or shampoo right and uh, it's, it's just I I feel like there it, it's something which can be, become easily commoditized and it's like corn or it's like you know some kind of soybean right and you're not going to make any money that way okay so I see where you're going with this but the thing is that there are some okay so when you were talking about the penny stocks those are all you were talking about the risky OTC you know in other words, over-the-counter type trading brokerages for these stocks. But there are ones that have, in a sense, started, you know, almost a brand for cannabis. And they're actually traded in the NASDAQ, you know. And those have all been like, if they're trading in NASDAQ, that means they have like financial sheets. They have like plans that you can go look at. You can do your fundamental, you know, analysis on these companies, you know, and if they're approved by NASDAQ, they've already gone through some stringent, you know, examination by another like third party. So in a sense, they're not as risky as some of the ones that you're talking about, like the penny stocks that are just OTC, where you don't know if, you know, they're going to be around next year or not. But the reason everybody really wants to do cannabis is because of the profitability. I mean, yes, you do have to worry about the risk. But the fact is, is you can go into it and make 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times if you get lucky, okay? 
yes, you have to get lucky. And part of that is doing your research and actually like figuring out which ones not to invest in and which ones have a higher probability of success. Because you have to realize all investments, you know, have some risk and all of them require, like what we talk about in all of our workshops and our courses, is you have to do your research, you have to do your homework, and there's risk in every investment. But the fact is, is that just because it's a risky, in a sense, you know, investment does not mean that it can, it's like totally out of the picture. You, there's always room in a portfolio for, you know, a small proportion of like some kind of speculation that can probably, possibly, you know, help you earn big profitability. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I hear you. It's one of the things though we said, like, and I heard you say it, luck is not a strategy, right? So I, this really gets at is, you know, I, I still see problems with the financing too. It's just like, because there's this stigma with it, it's harder for them to get money. So I, that stock dilution thing is one of the biggest problems. But like Andrew was saying, it, it comes down to research and knowing what kind of trade you're looking to do or what, how you're going to get into this investment at all. And that, that's really where, you know, you're figuring out your niche and what you're willing to research and go in, in depth in, because that's how, just like you have with any kind of regular stock, what's your plan? That's one of Angela's favorites words. What's your plan? And no matter what we say, that, that's really what it gets at. So make sure you hit the like, hit the subscribe if you enjoyed this video and put some comments down. Let us know what you're thinking about when you think about cannabis industry as well. Um, we, we would love to hear what you guys have to say. So make sure you check us out next time for the next episode. Have a good day.